Welcome back to Sunny Morning. We're here live here at the El Dorado Royale here in Mexico's Riviera Maya. It's absolutely, the atmosphere outside is so special today. You know what, I love it because it doesn't matter what's happening with the weather, it's always nice, fresh, and you are always on the mood of having a very nice time along the day. You right? don't see anybody with long faces. Everybody's in full <laughs> vacation mode here. So, um, and you know, I'm really optimistic. You know, there's been some really good things going on in the world. I mean, here on this program, we really try to cover mostly positive topics, okay? And um, today, I wanted to kind of also bring up something else, which I think is really a really big positive topic for the world, you know, in terms of world political leadership. Okay. Um, on Sunday, it was announced in China that China's current president, Premier Xi Jinping, um, has been voted by Congress to actually now stay on beyond 2023. So they've changed um, protocol completely. So he can now become lifetime president of China, which is huge for world politics. It is huge for China. So um, why, why that resonates, I think, is particularly for China. I mean, a country that, as we know, has a dictatorship mentality, but they have a very interesting leader. And I think Xi Jinping has come onto the world stage. He's met with a lot of global leaders, and he came here in 2013 to Mexico. And since then, he's met with lots of other international leaders, and he's setting, you know, uh, policy on the environment. I mean, he's doing so much right now in terms of change environmentally in China, um, emissions, but global trade. It's gonna be really interesting to watch. Um, the world is now migrating towards China. So, I mean, Sylvia, what do you think? Well, um, it's going to be probably hard to predict because a lot of things can change. And, you know, when you have a lifetime president, if it's a really good one and wise president and knowledgeable, then things, you know, could turn into a really huge benefit. And, uh, but when, you know, the person is not in that field, then it could turn around all the history from the country and of course uh, contribute with the rest of the world in, into something that nobody would actually like like what happened to cuba right of course for a long Castro. long time he was under a jail i would say you know yeah. they couldn't really they were locked into the in, in the island it's hugely so, oppressive wasn't it? and i'm just hoping that this uh, president this chinese president he can actually uh, rule as a wise and knowledgeable uh, pres president mm -hmm. and then so China can, can have the benefit of you know developing themselves into a much better position than what they already are because they're already in a very good position as well. Well world investment markets have reacted very strongly to the news of course and um, most people understand already the the Goliath manufacturing sector that China has represented. And we feel it here in Mexico too. I mean, there's not news that China and Mexico have formed a really strong trade partnership. And Mexico is extremely excited about expanding from only 5% trade relationship with China to a much bigger relationship. You know, given the backdrop of NAFTA, that Mexico depends about 80% on the NAFTA um, trade agreement uh, for, for its uh, GDP. But, you know, he's a very, He's a very affable leader. I mean, he's proven that, you know, okay, things are very much state driven. Um, and this news was received, you know, obviously with certain skepticism from China. Social media was shut down. Um, on social media, they kind of um, obviously criticized a little bit the idea, like you said, you know, is it putting all that power in one person's hands for a lifetime? Is that, how can we bring about change if necessary? But a lot of the corrupt Chinese politicians who he's already, he's already done away with, so many of them. I mean, it's really bad news for them. They were hoping by 2023, because he's an anti-corruption president, you know, no nonsense. Well, I mean, it would, it would from maybe in Mexico, it would be something really bad if uh, one of the presidents stay forever. I don't even want to think. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would swing to Cuba. Where are you going <laughs> geographically? Who who Just wants kidding. to? Who would who would vote? I mean, Angela Merkel, Germany's you know three four time now repeat chancellor. Yes. You know, she's trusted. She's a she's exactly. With the, Europe feels like they're in very good hands there. But so much is yet unknown about Asia and so much about China and you know as a global force. You see what's happened 
is because of you know, the United States starts on trade, you know. I mean, Donald Trump's not the first president to impose tariffs, I mean, okay? But recently he's let, you know, he's caused some alarm in international trade circles because he didn't want to cooperate at the Paris Agreement, he didn't want to sign it, you know, he said, He's in complete contrast to China. He doesn't believe that manufacturing is increasing emissions, whereas China is doing everything possible to stop motor vehicles coming in. By 2025, they'll be mostly hybrid or electric vehicles. So carbon emission cars won't be allowed to be sold in, in China in by China. that time. So, you know, he's a very reform-driven prime minister or president, plus social reform. I mean, I know this is something that you really, really like about you know equality he's much more in terms oh, definitely. of definitely yeah. that's that's what every country needs and uh, and if he is actually able to to pro to provide their country with all those elements of course that could really uh, help uh, their the country but also the rest of the world as an ex as a living example right so that's what we should actually uh, well that's how things are like that how so far and uh, so we are just hoping that uh, this, this president actually can uh, bring something really good to the rest of the world in, in general. And of course, the trade uh, notifications you were saying earlier, you were mentioning about, uh, if Mexico actually uh, brings a very good uh, trade system with China, of course, it could help Mexico a lot to be able to grow. And also, if that uh, association can bring to Mexico a lot more equity, mm. then mm. that would be wonderful. Then, you know, I will vote for him to be a president of Mexico as well. <laughs> well, you're going to say absolutely. I mean, he's definitely in the headlines. He's made the headlines for the right reasons. Um, Mexico's stance on trade. Now, we're coming to the end of this particular term of government, but they really set... Um, they've set a really good platform to continue with trade. I mean, they've opened up gas and oil to the Chinese in Mexico, so we've now seen Chinese drilling, exploration here or in the Gulf Coast. The financial sector has already benefited here. Um, ICBC, which is uh, China's biggest bank, is now um, taking a really strong foothold in, in Mexico City. Um, also in civil aviation and engineering. I mean, China and Mexico have formed a really, really strong alliance. So. Well, it could be a really good call for Mexico to actually set some regulations as well mm. to benefit his own people. Because most of the time, like yeah. uh, the Dragon Ball or Dragon, Dragon Mart, Dragon Mall, Dragon Mart, Dragon Mart yeah. and they were going to take care nearly, nearly where we are right now and uh, near the airport. And they closed it down. Why? Because the, the benefit was going to be only for the Mexican politicians who were allowing that project yeah. and the Chinese, but not the Mexican people. Yeah. So, and when you do that, of course, your, your country, your people is going to go down, of course. And mm -hmm. uh, this, you know, it should be uh, equalized for both parties to, it should be a win-win situation for everybody. Yeah. And especially... If uh, anybody is coming to a country, any country in the world, settle down, of course you need to contribute or collaborate for that country also to develop what they, what they have. Yeah, that was a big issue, wasn't it, uh, several years ago, because you know, China has a very strong community in Mexico for many, many years during the 50s, you know, Chinese exiles, during the whole cultural change, many people left China, and there's a very strong Chinese contingent in Mexico City. They have commerce, of course, and they're, they're quite successful. But in the Riviera, you know, where we thrive mostly on tourism, to have brought in a big manufacturing retail system that was predominantly Chinese wouldn't have had really any benefit for the local Mexican people. Exactly. Thousands of jobs just going to Chinese families coming in would not have been any real impact. So yeah, you say like important guidelines in terms of trade and fair trade, you know, um, in Mexico would always be really welcome. And also for Mexican companies too, make lots of international brand names from Mexico, being able to distribute and set up their businesses in China, having, you know, obviously very difficult guidelines for international companies there. But they are relaxing those, those rules too for Mexican businesses. So, you know, I think, I think it's a very prosperous situation. And obviously China is like the global BFF, you know, for everybody right now. I'd be interested to watch what collaboration continues there. We'll be bringing you more stories about China, about Mexico. So stay with us after the break. We've got something very special. We've got some special guests to join us talking about their experiences in Mexico. We'll see you after the break.